Hello, my name is Tim Rogers, and you are watching Kotaku.com. Welcome to part three of a series in which I compare the Japanese and English scripts of the game Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII came out 20 years ago. I lived in Japan for 10 years shortly after that. I'm not bragging about that, by the way. You can live in Japan for 10 years, too. Just go there and wait 10 years, and then you can say the same thing. I've never played Final Fantasy VII in Japanese until now. I'm having a real good time and noticing a lot of tiny little differences. I'd like to share some of those with you. As always, I'd like to warn you that the Japanese you learn over the course of this video might never be of any use whatsoever to you. In our first two episodes, we met Cloud, a mercenary, and Barrett, the boss of a group of environmental activist terrorists who call themselves Avalanche. They blew up a power reactor and got away with it. Avalanche's hideout is in the Sector 7 slums. This is a weird little colorful town with just enough kooky characters to feel like a place. Final Fantasy VII central female character number one is Tifa who works at the Seventh Heaven Bar in the Sector 7 slums. She indicates to us during our first dialogue with her that she knew Cloud when he was younger. She asks, did you fight with Barrett? And if you say, not this time, she says, you've grown up. When you were little, you used to get into fights at the drop of a hat. Uh, notice, by the way, that I'm playing the Japanese version on the PlayStation 4. This is nice because I can turn random battles off and speed the game up 300 goddamn percent. The English version of the PlayStation 4 release unfortunately contains the updated script from the 1998 PC version, so we're going to stick with the original for all the typos. Big thanks to the Livestream.net for providing capture of the original PlayStation version. In my current playthrough on the Japanese version, you'll see that I've named all the characters using English letters to make it easier for you all to look at. So, yeah, later, after Cloud gets his money from doing the first bombing job, Tifa begs him to stay and help. Cloud goes cold. He says he's gotta get out. Now, Tifa delivers a pretty clunky English line. You're just going to walk right out, ignoring your childhood friend? In Japanese, there's a lot more depth to this line. Kawaii osananajimi no tanomi mo kikazu ni ichaunda. Kawaii is Japanese for scary. Oh, no, wait, that's kawaii. If you've seen at least one anime, you know that kawaii means cute. Osananajimi is roughly translated as childhood friend though it has a lot of depth beyond that. So here Tifa is saying, you're just going to go without even listening to what your kawaii osananajimi wants from you? By calling herself kawaii in Japanese, Tifa demonstrates that she has the cheeky sense of humor to tease Cloud about how others perceive their relationship. Osananajimi takes its root from the word osanai, which means very young, with a sort of subtextual suggestion that one was so young, one might not have any memories of that time. Osananajimi is how you describe a person with whom you shared the experience of being so young, you might not be able to remember ever meeting them in the first place. It's a weirdly deep word. It gets thrown around a lot in Japanese fiction, drama, and song lyrics. In six short syllables, you communicate the depth and breadth of a specific type of romantic-ish relationship. This is a big, big, important, loud vocabulary word. It rules. The people around Cloud and Tifa have latched onto the word and have been using it to describe them, both as a pair and individually. This nicknaming exists in a weird gray area between teasing and sincere. When Barrett keeps watch over Cloud as he sets the bomb in the Mako reactor later, Cloud asks, I know, you're my watch, right? And Barrett replies, Tifa's old friend, that ain't good enough. They're all using the word osananajimi in Japanese. However, translating it directly as childhood friend is a little bit weird. The word itself is such a transient thing of texture and nuance. We could translate Barrett's reply of tifa no osananajimi, sore dake ja fuan nan de na, as yeah, I don't care how long you and Tifa have known each other. Osana Najimi leads us, then, to a spectacular translation mistake. I'm excited to have spotted this one, actually. The line in question is one you might actually never have seen. When the player first enters the Sector 7 slums, we see the whole avalanche gang galloping toward the bar. There's a commotion. Barrett kicks everyone out. We see Tifa, very briefly, running around outside, presumably apologizing. I mean, I think that's what she's doing. You have to use your imagination with these graphics. If you take your time getting to the bar and you talk to Barrett, he just says, okay, go on ahead. However, if you rush up to him by using the run button and talk to him while Tifa is still visible outside, he says, Heh heh, you wanna meet your little baby? This is amazing. The Japanese line is Heh heh, osananajimi ni hayaku ka, which we could translate as Heh heh, you in a hurry to see your childhood friend again? He's teasing, Cloud. Then he speaks a line that's not in the English version. Relax, we don't want to appear suspicious to the people here in town. How did it end up as You wanna meet your little baby? Well, as I've said, osanai can mean very young. It can be used to refer to an infant. This dialogue box triggers only at a very specific time. I know for a 
the fact that the translator of Final Fantasy VII was working on an extreme deadline. He might not have been able to verify this line's location in the game. In the spreadsheet he worked from as he translated, the line might not have appeared anywhere near the dialogue in the rest of the scene. Also, maybe he was tired. In an effort to persuade Cloud to join the next mission, Tifa reminds him of a promise he made. He'd said that if he ever became a famous hero, he would help her out if she was ever in trouble. She tries to jog his memory. The screen fades. We see a starry night. Here is an ominous line. Look, the well. Do you remember? To which Cloud replies, yeah, back then. Look, the well is a curious phrasing. It makes us imagine that Tifa has magically transported Cloud into a VR construct of her memories. It works, even though it's wrong. In Japanese, she uses the word hora. Hora can mean look in a sort of voila sense, like you lift the cover off a plate, revealing a magnificent pot roast. Hora. Though it can also be a multi-purpose memory defibrillator. It can mean, hey, remember, or come on, in a suggestive tone. Also, she doesn't say well, she says, kyusuito, water tower. Specifically, she says, mura no kyusuito, the, the water tower in our village. When she says, hora, mura no kyusuito, she's saying, come on, the water tower in our village. Then Cloud replies with a classic, stoic, Japanese anime hero staple. Ah. This is translated as, yeah, back then. Though it's worth pointing out that anotoki is just the word for that and the word for time. Uh, so here Cloud is performing the Japanese drama device of saying something just to say something. You may recall this from Metal Gear Solid. He's filling a line, yeah, that time. This is kind of the Japanese equivalent of the English phrase, yeah, that was something that happened. Except it's not snippy at all, it's actually kind of cool. Cloud elects to go on another mission with these guys because they need the help and he needs the money. During the mission briefing, Barrett says to Cloud, Don't go thinking you so bad just cause you was in soldier. A lot of viewers were curious about this line in Japanese. Jibun ga moto soldier da kara te ni yun ja ne yu. Don't talk big just because you yourself used to be in soldier. Maybe the English is a little more interesting. This mission is a lot faster than the first one. There's some trouble on the train, which Cloud calmly addresses with. So, what are we going to do now? Barrett replies with a burst of uncensored profanity. Shoot! The heck you so calm about? You busting up my rhythm. In Japanese, of course, he calls Cloud an ochitsuita yaro, a chilled out yaro, a calm yaro. If you don't know what a yaro is, please go back and watch part two. When we've finished the mission, Barrett exclaims profanity with all capital letters. For the previous instance of this English word, Barrett had simply said, Ke in Japanese. That's not so profane, it's, it's more of a mouth sound. So the translator spelled the word, not in all caps that time. This time, however, Barrett uses the actual specific word for turds. Kuso donut dinda. Turds. What is happening? Since turd is literally the word this time around, the translator went with all caps. I understand the judgment. Well, we meet the president of the Shinra Corporation who summons a robot which we fight and it blows up, leaving a hole in the bridge. Cloud is left hanging. This dialogue here owns. Tifa calls out to Cloud, Please don't die. You can't die. There's still so much I want to tell you. In Japanese, this is either more or less vague, depending on your personal life experience. You must survive. You can't die. There are still so many things about which I want to talk with you. Now Barrett asks Cloud if he's gonna be all right. We have two options. We can choose be strong, which results in Cloud telling Barrett to take care of Tifa, which surely impresses Tifa. This develops Cloud's character by showing him thinking about someone else. Or we can say, I don't know if I can hold on, which develops Cloud's character by shattering his macho facade. I'm going to choose to shatter the facade. This results in Barrett saying in English, don't go crying like a woman. There ain't nothing I can do for you. You gotta do it yourself. In Japanese, Barrett definitely, absolutely does not gender his smack talk. He simply says, Nasake nai koe dasen ja ne yu. Warui ga nani mo shite yare so ni nai. Jibun de nanto ka shite kure. Don't sound so pathetic. Sorry, there's nothing I can do for you. You're gonna have to do it for yourself, all right? Cloud crashes down into a church through the roof, literally. This is the exact opposite of what I did figuratively when I was a teenager. Here, Cloud re-meets Eris, the flower girl he met on the street in Midgar at the beginning of the game. She's very cute and friendly. Throughout this early segment, Final Fantasy VII has offered players subtle dialogue choices that will lead to Cloud going on a date with either Tifa or Eris at one point in the story. The story clearly sets Eris up as the true love interest option, clearly, because 
dies. Spoiler, she later dies violently, lending Cloud tremendous determination in the process. There's been some discussion in fan communities since Final Fantasy VII first released as to whether Eris's name is spelled correctly or not in the original English translation. In some Japanese promotional materials from before the game's release, her name was written out in English as Aerith. In these same promotional materials, the villain Sephiroth's name was written as Sephiros. When Square announced the original translation, her name was officially Eris. In Katakana, her name is e a i s u The su in Katakana is used to recreate several English letters. A great example is the English last name Smith. In Katakana, it's Sumisu. Now imagine this was a Japanese word. How do we spell this? Sumisu? Smisu? Sumith? The Katakana su is versatile. It lives in the speaker's mouth and the listener's ear at the same time. I, I don't know if that's actually what I should was meant what I meant to say. If we defined perfect accuracy as having unblinking respect for the katakana, we'd spell Eris's name as E Arisu. However, everyone seems to agree that it starts with A E, so a compromise. We will name her Arisu with the katakana su there at the end. Also, I'm just going to pronounce it Eris for the duration of this video series. Clearly, of course, her name is supposed to be spelled E A I R T H. I mean, look at that. It looks like Earth. e a r i s u is hilarious. Her and Cloud have this immediate chemistry. She has this wonderful, easy sense of humor that doesn't really come across in the English translation. I like her. Some dangerous dudes want e a r i s u for some sort of magic power that she has. She asks Cloud to be her bodyguard for a little bit. They escape from the church. They head back to e a r i s u s home, the Sector 5 slums. Here we encounter a famous line. This guy are sick. My phone has been figuratively ringing off the hook for weeks about this line, so I present it to you in its original Japanese. Most effectively translated, this means this guy are sick. That was a good joke. No, actually, it should be translated as this guy is sick. Yes, big revelation.、Uh, R should have been is. A completely literal translation of her line would be the person here seems to be sick. In Japanese, we can't be 100% positive if she means person or people. Plurals are a tricky business in Japanese. Hito means person or people. Hitobito means people. Hitotachi means people. So we have two concrete plural words for people and a singular word for person, which also means people a lot of the time. What does this say about the Japanese language? Well, for one thing, it says you, you kind of. Kinda gotta just listen to a lot of it in order to get it, so let's not get too deep here. My guess is that all the lines that appear on this exterior map of the Sector 5 slums were in one part of the text spreadsheet. The translator translated it as, These people are sick. He might have figured, Hey, this story so far has been about a lot of miserable people living amid pollution. The dialogue for the interior part of the pipe, with the sick guy in question, might have been in a different part of the translator's spreadsheet. Upon seeing the interior of the pipe, the translator thought, Oh heck, this must be the people. People that are sick. Then he went back and just made an honest typo. He changed these people to this guy and forgot to change are to is. So, boom, mystery solved. That's kind of an extremely boring solution to the mystery. Also, hey, am I the only person who thinks I could live in that pipe? You got a bed with a pillow, a TV, some books, a laundry line, some trophies to remind you of stuff you did that was great. We go to e a r i s u s house and meet her mom. e a r i s u asks Cloud what he wants to do next. He says he wants to go to the Sector 7 slums, to Tifa's bar, and e a r i s u asks, Is Tifa your girlfriend? Here you can say, No! with like a billion exclamation marks. The Japanese word for girlfriend is kanojo, which is also the Japanese pronoun she. Suffice it to say, pronouns are a gravely serious business in Japanese. I chose to Tell e a r i s u that no, Tifa was not my girlfriend. Because, I mean, she's not, right? Cloud sneaks out in the middle of the night because e a r i s u s mom tells him to. She says she doesn't want e a r i s u hanging around with any more soldiers anymore. Well, e a r i s u accompanies you anyway. Here we wind up at a destroyed playground. This is an iconic moment. Like, look at that weird slide. What is that, a polar bear? e a r i s u says, I can't believe it's still here. In Japanese, she says, Natsukashi, mada attanda. Natsukashi is such a word 
alone. It is merely the adjective for nostalgic. To exclaim Natsukashi all alone as its own sentence is to say all at once I remember this. This either is or reminds me strongly of a thing or a bygone era I love or once loved or stopped loving at one point in time and now realize I wish to love it again. So she says Natsukashi it's still here. Atop the slide Earisu asks Cloud what his soldier rank was. Cloud says he was first class and Earisu says just like him. Except in Japanese of course she doesn't use a, a, a gendered pronoun. So Cloud says just like who? And Earisu says my first boyfriend. Except, uh, no. That is not what she says in Japanese. In Japanese, she says, Hajimete suki ni natta shito, which means the first person I ever liked or loved. So this involves the word ski, which is an adjective roughly meaning likable. Now, just uh, as a disclaimer, I'm not actually any kind of Japanese teacher. I'm just some guy who picked this language up. I don't know how. Though, here's a tip. Learning the usage of ski was a great turning point in my own personal experience in arriving at fluency in Japanese. So let me summarize it for you. You. In Japanese, to say, I like strawberries, you say, strawberries are likable. You don't even have to put a first person pronoun on there. Hajimete means the first time. Ninatta is became. So she describes this person as the first person who became likable. In English, Cloud asks, Were you serious? In Japanese, Cloud asks, Tsukiyatteta, which means more like, Were you two dating? In English, Earisu says, No, though I liked him for a while. In Japanese, Earisu says, Sonnan janai no chotto ii na. Which is more like, nah, it wasn't like that. It was just me being like, wouldn't it be nice? Before this conversation can get any hotter, the big gate flies open and a chunky purple freak wagon rolls out with Tifa riding on the back of it. Where's she going? Who is taking her there? What is going on? Adisu can't wait to find out. And neither can you.